Volleyball involves basically four different skills. Serving, passing, setting, and hitting. Now each of these skills influences both the horizontal and vertical components of velocity. The vertical component of velocity affects the height and is highly influenced by gravity. The horizontal component of velocity affects the range or the distance horizontally the projectile can travel. By combining both the horizontal and the vertical components of velocity, you end up with a nice smooth projectile motion. Great! Let's go check on Bubba. Now Bubba and the slug collided in midair. That's what you should have seen. So here's all our pieces. Here's Bubba, our worthy dinosaur. Here's the steel pin that inserted into the electromagnet. And here's the slug. Now as I blasted the slug through the blowgun, this slug flew in two-dimensional motion. It was going both horizontal and, and vertical at the same time. Now Bubba's motion is expressed as one-dimensional motion because all he did was fall straight down. Yet these two objects collided in midair. How is that possible? How can we explain what's going on? Because you saw the bullet or the slug hit him right in the chest. There was a collision. But that collision occurred for a reason. Physically, what was that reason? Well, that's the purpose of this lesson. At the end of the lesson, we're going to come back to this demonstration and be able to explain why the collision occurred in the first place. Well, let's look more specifically at the slug. We've already talked about one-dimensional motion from Bubba's perspective. Let's look now at the motion of this slug. Now, this slug, as it flies through the air, is defined as a projectile. Now, a projectile is any object, any object with no means of self propulsion. With no means of self propulsion. There's no rockets on it, there's no jets, there's no propellers, there's no nothing. It just flies through the air. That is how we define a projectile. Now, as it flew through the air in two dimensions, it is a projectile, and that motion is sometimes referred to as projectile motion. Now, the path that this slug took is the path of the projectile also has a name. The path the projectile takes is called the trajectory. So we've got the slug flying through the air with no means of self-propulsion and is therefore termed a projectile. So we can call it projectile motion. The path that it's following is called a trajectory. Well, it's this path. It's this path, this trajectory, that answers a lot of questions. So that we can better understand projectile motion, let's get a picture of a path of a projectile. So let's go ahead and gather some data and take a picture of a trajectory of a projectile. 